All right, let's work on a fluid flow problem. They want us to find the volumetric flow rate for a liquid flow inside a very wide inclined channel with wide given as H and width given as W. They want us to assume a steady state, fully developed conditions, uh, assume constant properties like density, for example, and they also tell us that we have an angle theta with, the, with respect to the horizon. So let's find the volumetric flow rate. That, that could have units of uh, meter cube per second or feet cubed per second, right? We're not going to be interested, but this is just for our uh, knowledge. So what, could we, what kind of formula should we use to achieve this, right? We have uh, velocity times area. Well, the area, we know it because uh, we have width given and we have h given. These two will give us the area, so we know that. But the velocity, we do not know. And it will not be a constant. So we will have to find a function for it where we will describe the velocity at different points throughout this flow. Like, for example, if we pick a point right here, we'll have a different velocity than if we pick one right here, or a different one if we pick a point right here. Okay, so let's see what do we need to kind of imagine to achieve what we need to do. This is the U channel that they are talking about. There is no top to it, right? So we have a free surface on top of our fluid. And another important thing, this is a very wide channel. This W is very wide because the same way this bottom surface will have an effect on our flow, these side surfaces also have an effect and that would ruin our one dimensional uh, analysis. But if it's very wide and we do an analysis right at the middle, then that interference from the side doesn't apply we can take our one dimensional flow. And here, all the molecules of this flu fluid, they are flowing in the x direction only. We do not have any molecules flowing up towards the surface or down, or even going across in the w direction, like in the channel would be going like this or backwards, okay? Now, in order to achieve uh, calculating our velocity profile in our flow, we will rely on the conservation equations, namely the conservation of momentum, which is also known as Navier-Stokes, and the continuity equation, which is conservation of mass. Okay, here it is, Navier-Stokes equation for our flow. There is all the terms beautifully displayed, and we're going to start crossing out a bunch of stuff from it. But we need to make sure we have valid reasons why we are crossing them out. So, first, they told us steady state. That means no change with respect to time. If we look at this large formula, we can see that the first part is the one that is dependent on time. Since steady state, we can go ahead and cross it out. Now, like we said, we do not have any molecules flowing in the y direction or in the w direction. Therefore, we can say that v is 0, w is 0, right? Let's cross them out. Next, uh, let's take a look at this guy, the pressure term. We have a free surface, therefore we will not be dealing with pressure change along this axis, so we can go ahead and cross that one out, free surface. Now next, let's see right here, this term. We are dealing with a one-dimensional flow, right? And we are analyzing it in two dimensions, x and y dimension. Therefore, this is a 2D problem. We do not need to worry about a z. So cross this guy out. Now, we have two more terms, this one and this one, that we can cross out. Now, what's the reason behind crossing it out? We're going to rely on the conservation of mass. Here, 
here, here we crossed V and W out because they were zero. But U is not zero, right? We said we have a flow going in this direction, therefore we have a, va a value for U, not zero. So let's go to the continuity equation right here and start crossing stuff out from here. We have, again, steady state, so we can cross the first term out. The density is constant, it's inc incompressible. We could have not even write it in the formula, right? It would have not made any difference. Now the next one, this one, and this one. We said V and W are zero. We can cross them out. Now what we have left? We have this term and the zero, right? That's all we have left. We factor out density. Density is a constant. We can just cross it out. So therefore, we have this equal zero. Therefore, we can come back and confidently cross it out because the conservation of mass told us that it is okay to do so. Now, this term is the second derivative of what we had here, right? This was the first derivative of u with respect to x. And this one is the second derivative of u with respect to x. So, mathematically thinking, when we take a derivative of something and its result is zero, then if we take a second derivative of that zero, it will be still a zero. So therefore, we can go ahead and cross this term out as well. Right here, zero. Okay, now we crossed out everything that we can cross out. What else can we do here? Well, let's take a look at this term right here. These are the body forces. The only body force that we will be dealing with here is gravity. So, if uh, this setup would have been horizontal, right, then our gravity would be pointing straight down, right? But we have a slope. Therefore, our flow going in this x direction, therefore we can now have to break up our uh, gravity vector into its components. We're going to have to take our x component and we're going to have to take our y component. For our setup, since we are analyzing this flow only in the x direction, we're going to need our gx, the x component, which is g times sine theta. Here's the y component too, but for this problem we do not need it. Okay, what else can we do? I think we did everything we can do with this equation, so let's uh, clean this mess up and rewrite it. Here's the Navier-Stokes, what we had, everything that we crossed out. So, what do we have left over? The body force right there, plus kinematic viscosity times this second derivative of u with respect to y. These are the only terms that we have left. Let's plug in the body force value that we have found. This term stays unchanged. And here, I multiplied it with density according to this formula, right? If we multiply it with density, instead of kinematic viscosity, we will be dealing with dynamic viscosity. This, one, this step, if you don't want to do, it's completely fine. Won't change absolutely anything. If you want to keep working with kinematic viscosity, you'll end up at the same result, no issues. So, uh, here I just move stuff around and I move the second derivative on the left-hand side and all the constant on the right-hand side. Now, this looks a bit more menacing, but if we think back to our differential equations class, nothing more complicated than this right here. It's x double prime equals to a const constant, like 5 or 6 or whatever. Right, second derivative equals a constant. So this is the uh, differential equation that describes our flow. Now we need to find u, our velocity. So the second derivative is in our way. So we need to integrate twice in order to reduce it and have it left only u by itself. So let's do that. First integral with respect to y on both sides. Here we're just taking an integral of the 
constant, right? Here, the integral with one of the derivatives will just take care of each other. Therefore, we'll end up with the first derivative equals the constant times y plus c1. There's the second integral. We'll take another integral of both sides. And here it is what we get for our u. This is our velocity. There you go. The constant y squared c1y plus c2. Mathematically speaking, this is the general solution of this uh, differential equation right here. Now, that one will, is just temporary, right? We need to go ahead and find our uh, particular solution. The c1 and c2 are unknowns, therefore we need to find them. And to do that, we're going to rely on our boundary conditions right here. We have two unknowns, c1, c2. Therefore, we need two boundary conditions to figure them out. So the first one that I'm going to use is this guy right here. At y equals 0, we have velocity in the u equals 0. And this is due to the no slip condition. So what does that mean? It means that the very last molecule of this solid surface right here, it's obviously the molecule is not this big, but so we can see it, I'm exaggerating. So the last molecule of this surface is attached to the very first molecule of our fluid. They are just stuck together. So therefore, there's no velocity. Velocity is zero. Obviously, as we go further and further and further away from that surface, we have velocity, right? But at this surface, no slip condition, no movement. We are stuck. That's our first boundary condition. And the second one that I'm going to use is at the free surface. Basically, the very last molecule on top of our fluid. Over here, no shear stress. And from that, we can deduct that the change, there is no change in U with respect to Y. So these are my two boundary conditions that's going to help find the C's. Okay. Okay, let's take the first equation that we found and use our second boundary condition. Plug it in and we can find C1 being equal to this constant right here. Let me put these uh, equations that we found up here. Just so we can keep an eye on them, you know. Equation 1, this one. Plug in boundary condition 2, this one. It will give us C1. Same thing. Let's use second equation. Plug in first boundary condition. And we can find C2 is 0. Plug these two back in. Into our uh, general solution. And here it is. Our particular solution for our differential equation. Right here. And this is what describes how our flow is, how, how is our velocity in this fluid going down this slope. U equals this constant y squared plus another constant y. Okay, so we are not done yet. They didn't ask us to find the velocity. They asked us to find the volume flow rate. This guy right here. This weird sign, if you never saw it before, this is a V, but I like to give it a cross like that because uh, we use V for velocity, we use V for volume, so if I cross it out, like I can instantly know that that's not velocity. Okay, so volume flow rate. Uh, the formula for it is velocity times area, but the area is a constant, the velocity is not. If both of them would be constant, we can just use this formula, no problem, and call it a day. But since u is a function, we need to use the integral form of it right here. u times derivative of the area. dA breaks up into the width and the height. So which one do we integrate with respect to? Are we going to take an integral and go from this point, go across till here? Or are we going to integrate and go from this point going up right here to the top? Well, let's take a look what's happening. 
u is a function of which one w or y it's a function of y right well let me write all over it so nobody can see anything so it's a function of y w is just a constant and remember we said that as we go in the w direction our velocity profile would not change there's no change you see if i pick a point here that's how the velocity profile would look like another one at this location another one at this one another one at the end of it where over there so going in w there's no change so we're not integrating in an area where there's no change we're going to integrate in this on the y axis so dy because that's where our change is. Therefore, our integral will look like u times w times dy, going from zero down here, all the way to the top right here. There it is. All right, enough said. So let's move on. We're gonna plug in u, our function, into right here. This is it, right here, and. All we have to do now, work on figuring out this integral. I'm going to break it into two pieces, solve it, take out some uh, uh, constants, then we're going to go ahead and evaluate it and clean it up, simplify it, and we're able to arrive at our final answer where we see that volumetric flow rate is equal to the width times density times gravity times sine theta over 3 times the dynamic viscosity and overall equal to uh, overall times h cubed okay now if you didn't change to dynamic viscosity and you left it in kinematic viscosity due to this formula right here right then this you could write the answer this way where you will not have density and you will not have dynamic viscosity you will just have kinematic viscosity both is perfectly fine it doesn't change absolutely anything all right well this would be our final answer thank you guys for watching uh, make sure you like the video so other people can find it as well and have a great day